Hey guys, I'm going to go over the basics of UGUI sorting, the Unity GUI system that was first introduced in Unity 4.6. So this is going to be a 2D project, but again, I've done this before. It doesn't really matter whether you select 3D or 2D. It just uh, affects the way that the editor gets set up. I usually start in 3D. And as soon as Unity starts, I am going to... Just drop in a canvas here in my project. So top top left, you see the hierarchy. Uh, this isn't really my layout here. We can go to Dance Workspace. There you go, there's my layout. And again, you can save your layout by just dropping, uh, pulling a drop down on the top right. Save it after you've modified your layout. Okay, so I'm going to right click in the hierarchy, select UI. I'm gonna select a canvas. So what I'm going to go over here is the ability to resort your canvas and try and explain how this canvas is designed. So one of the things about the canvas is that because it renders in a separate uh, render pass the, than the rest of the 3D engine, the way it renders is based on the hierarchy. So I'll go ahead and show you real quick if I drop in some images here. I'll drop this image. You can see there's a white image right there. I'll go ahead and put the scale down. You don't really need a 4K resolution. So I've got one image here. I'm going to make it red. I'm going to duplicate that image by hitting Control D. I've got two images now. I can go ahead in the editor in the scene window so I can see these images. I'm going to make this one green. And I'm just going to move it over here just slightly so they're still overlapping. I'm going to drop one more image in by Control D duplicating. You can also right click and go to duplicate. I'm going to make this last one blue RGB. Okay. So you can see right now red, green, and blue. Now you can see the way that they're sorted. Red is rendering first, green is on top, and blue is finally on top of that. Let me go ahead and rename these. F2 gives me the ability to rename in Windows. I believe it's just enter on the Mac. Red, green, and uh, red. There we go. Red, green, and blue. So real quick, just looking at the hierarchy, I can drag red down. As long as I stay under this canvas element, suddenly red gets sorted on top. I can do the same with blue. Blue gets sorted on top. Put green right in between there, and we've got red, green, and blue again. And you can see it's really interesting how they're sorted, but this has an impact on how you work your interface elements in Unity. I should really have this full screen. So the impact this has is that if you are developing your interface and you want an item to come forward, the only way you can do that is by changing its hierarchy position. There is a Z position here, but it doesn't do anything because this is rendering in the 2D system. So there's no real purpose for the Z position other than how it interacts with the rest of the Unity scene, but not with the elements on its canvas. Another thing you could do is you could create a separate canvas. So I could drop in another canvas here. And I could drop in some UI image elements below that canvas, and you can see they render on top. Oops, I just dropped the canvas right in the other canvas. So no matter where I put them, these are rendering on top, and there's a sort order with the canvas that you can modify. So you can have multiple canvas on the screen at once. Let's just move this guy, not the canvas. Move this guy down a little bit. So you can have multiple canvas on the screen at once and you can nest your elements in each canvas. That's one way to get away with rendering elements on top and you can change the sort order. Now another thing you could do is you could select your red and you could add a canvas component to your red element and you could override the sorting. So now I can pop the red on top of everything. There you go with that. Uh, in practical terms, if you wanted a script, say you wanted to click on the red and have it pop up, or you want to click on the green, have it pop up, um, 
you could write a little script. Now let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna add a scripts folder here. Scripts. And I'm going to create a script called clickable image. Oops, let's not put that three in there. Now, if you ever accidentally name your script uh, incorrectly, you're gonna see that you're gonna have some some problems if you try and rename your script. The, the reason that you're gonna have that problem, I just took out the three in the clickable image script, but the class still has the three in it. So you have to make sure that your class name and your file name both match. So I'm gonna go ahead and implement some things here, but first I have to use the, the events system. There we are. I pointer down handler. Now, I just added a comma and added this interface. This interface means that this class has to have certain members in it or certain methods. So if I roll over, you can see it tells you what the problem is. Click clickable image does not implement the interface members. I pointer down handler on pointer down. So, and then it says show potential fixes, control period. So hit control period. And I'll just select implement interface. If you look here, you see it's giving us two hints. Implement the interface, it shows you the code it's gonna add. Implement the interface explicitly. Again, it shows you the code it's gonna add. So I just go ahead and let it add that code for me. It adds the method name. Uh, it adds the, the entire signature the way that it's supposed to be implemented. And it adds this throw exception, not implemented exception. That, that's just gonna throw an error anytime I click on on an object that has the script on it. And we can look at that real quick. It's kind of useful if you have, if you have a script and you start stubbing things out and you're not sure exactly how they're gonna work, you can just leave that throw not implemented exception in. And then in your console, you'll see what you haven't implemented yet. So you can see these exceptions came up as I clicked on each one of these. I could quickly just implement something here. Instead of throw, I could debug log. Uh, object, uh, let's see, game object dot name uh, plus was clicked. Okay. Game object name. Now it's going to tell me, and I don't have clear on play. I like to set my console up so that it always clears every time I start it. So now, there we go. I didn't have my comments being. Uh, output. You can turn off the comments or your logs. You can turn off your warnings. You can turn off errors. So this is kind of nice if you want to filter just for errors. I'm going to leave those on so you can see red was clicked, red was clicked, green was clicked, blue was clicked, blue, green, red. Okay. So now let's just say that we want, um, let's see this. This is a UI element. UI elements all have a rec transform. If we look at that, you see it has a rec transform as opposed to a 3D element, which has a transform. So the UI elements render with this rec transform in 2D and they use the pivot, they use the anchor positions. So the anchor positions are really nice because you can anchor things to the top left of a canvas, the bottom right, or any way you want. You can have them stretch in different ways. And we'll look at that in another tutorial but for now. Just know that we're working with this rec transform. So you can get the rec transform from the transform itself, or you can do a get component rec transform on the game object. And you can say set as first sibling or as last sibling. So if you set it as first sibling, then anytime you click on any given object, it's going to move it up to the top. Right, so boom, I just clicked on that blue guy. He moved down to the bottom because really he's moving up to the top of the canvas element, which means that he'll get rendered first. So you can see how easy it is to resort these just with clicks. Normally things pop up to the top though. So let's, instead of set as first, let's say set as last sibling. Okay, we'll hit play. There we go, set as last sibling, there you go. So 
that's a quick and easy way to sort things and you can see it's updating my canvas there so you can sort things really easily this way it doesn't take much work just write a small script have your game objects pop to the top and really if that's all you're doing you don't need to have the start and update unity will call the update loop in every game object or every component that has an update loop in it we really don't want it to update that script so we just want that script to behave on events that happen in the game okay so that was just a really quick primer on how to sort some ui elements and a little bit of understanding on how the ui elements are created and rendered in in unity and we'll go more in depth on this in future tutorials and try and make something interesting uh, using these techniques all right i hope this was helpful please uh, leave any comments below thank you